which encourages them to follow or even mock, mock their parents. Why? How? I mean, yeah, I know how. You can mock, mock your parents, but you will be immediately grounded. Hello, IELTS learner. I see you are watching another YouTube video to improve your IELTS writing, right? Very well, welcome to IELTS Juice. Let's start assessing an essay together. So this time the rubric says, some people think that parents should teach children how to be good members of society. That's very correct and that's a very noble thing to do. Others, however, believe that school is the place to learn this. Aha! Uh -huh. So it is school's responsibility to actually teach children how to be members of, I mean, not just members, but valuable members of their society. Discuss both these views and give your own opinion. Uh, you probably uh, think that this is, you know, if you have been to different IELTS communities, uh, you might have heard that this is called a discussion-led essay. And basically, it's a discussion. You have two camps, two views, two viewpoints, two uh, schools of thought, and uh, you need to address one and then the other, and you have the chance to actually express your own opinion. You're right. Let me just add a layer to it and tell you that from the IELTS' perspective, you need to show that you actually identify, ad address, and develop all those three points. The viewpoint for team A, the viewpoint for team B, and then you come up with your own view. So let's see how the response um, will address this kind of question. Oops, that was a bit fast. All right, hold on. Candidate's response. Some people believe that main responsibility is with parents to teach their kids to become beneficial individuals for society. I like this. Instead of saying the word good, we have the word beneficial. I like that. Uh, try to find synonyms, suitable synonyms, please, for words like good, bad, better. These are not very, um, I don't want to say, in, uh, I mean, uh, valueless, but they, are, they don't carry much value. They don't carry much weight in your response. It's... It's a very good idea to get rid of all these normal words and replace them with some better synonyms. But make sure you read a lot of examples with, uh, for the synonyms that you pick up so that you know when you replace the word good with, for example, in this case, beneficial, what happens? What are the collocations? What are the instances? It's not that easy. Uh, it's an important matter for that. I'm going to put the lesson about collocations in the description below. If you haven't already checked it, please do check it. It's just, I mean, two minute, three minute read. Uh, it's not that large, but it will give you a perspective on how collocations can actually help you. And uh, that, is a, that is a valuable lesson. Uh, when you are learning a new word, make sure that that uh, how to use that new word all right individuals for society while others argue that school plays a more important role in children's future lives it's very clear the first sentence introduces me to both camps i like it everything is clear in my head the two camps are completely organized and they are they in my head they both have their own position now let's see what the writer's opinion is. In my opinion, both parents and schools must cooperate to help children develop positive responsibilities that can serve society in the future. That's a very smart move. The writer 
believes in both. Now, you know why I said that's smart? Pay attention. Because we are going to address camp A's view and then we're going to address camp B's view. In this case, the writer believes in both. Now, the writer's opinion has nothing extra because the writer believes both are valuable. So the writer contrib contributes to both ideas and the writer doesn't need a separate paragraph for his or her own opinion. You don't have to uh, imagine this is the IELTS session, you're writing and, and it's a, a session, you know, you're under exam condition. And imagine you don't have to write another paragraph to talk about your own opinion because your opinion is different from these two. Your opinion is actually a combination of these two and you have already developed them. One in the first paragraph, the other in the second paragraph. Done. There isn't anything else to say. You just write a conclusion. You, in the conclusion, you just merge these two ideas and voila, you have your essay. And all the elements are addressed. All the elements are developed. And that's a smart move. Of course, you can go ahead and come up with your own opinion and say, I don't like this. I don't like that. I, I have an opinion on my own. When that happens, you need to write a separate paragraph. And when you do that, you will increase the chances of exposing your errors. That's a risky move. That's why I said this is a smart move. And I, I liked it because of that. Let's move on. Let's go to the first body paragraph. That means the first camp's opinion. It is often said that children become who their fathers and mothers teach them to be. And this is probably why some people believe that it is parents, uh, correctly punctuated, duty to positively raise children. Uh, I like this topic sentence. A little long, but I cannot remove any elements of it. It has to be like this. This is it. This is the, this is the topic sentence. Parents are the first individuals. I like the use of individual here. I like it. This is accurately used. That children live with. Correct. And before going to school, correctly punctuated, kids spend kids. Oh, mm, a kid, it has this informal element to it. And that is not very good because we're writing a formal essay. IELTS tasks. I, I know I'm repeating myself. IELTS tasks, task two in general and academic, all task twos, all task one academics, and only formal letters of task one for general training are formal. Okay, so children, spend or or youngsters spend uh, almost all of their time time when we refer to time as uh, like that uh, like the, the uh, whose symbol is uh, what you see on a clock uh, or we say space time you know that kind of time uh, or, or or you tap on your uh, rest and you say I like you we're running out of time that is uncountable when we say times that means uh, you can put a number for example i last week i ate at mcdonald's uh, two times that means uh, i went there once and then uh, for another time for uh, for the second time which made it, uh, made it twice I went there to have dinner, for example. That is countable. And, and the meaning of that is different. That has nothing to do with the clock on the wall or the watch that you wear on your wrist. Uh, that's a totally different word. So that is countable. But this one, uh, their time is uncountable with their parents. 
And therefore, I love, I love the command over punctuation. The writer has a very good grip on how to punctuate. I love it. And therefore, they are continuously influenced by their parents' behaviors. This is the British spelling of behavior. It's fine. Furthermore, there is a deep mm, emotional relationship between, uh, between the young and their parents. Or if you want to just generalize, between children and parents. Which encourages them to follow or even mock, mock their parents. Why? How? I mean, yeah, I know how. You can mock, mock your parents, but you will be immediately grounded. And you are sent to your room, and they lock the door, and there is no dinner for you, and you have to sit silently in your room. You can, you're probably you, you you can cry. Uh, but uh, when you leave the room the day after, your parents will teach you that mocking them is, or mocking any individual, actually is not a very acceptable behavior. So you need to correct that. And they might probably address you like young man or uh, young lady. You need to remember that mocking people is not a very good attitude to pick. So, no, I'm probably, I, I think uh, the writer wanted to say to, and even imitate uh, or copy, you know, you, you imitate other people's actions. Like you look at the way that they do it and then you try to follow the same pattern, but you have no bad intentions. This mocking has that, it's, it's the same thing, but has negative connotation to it. Parents, perhaps parents are the first role models for children. Definitely, it's a very good word. I love, I mean, I'm in love with the punctuation here. Look at it. Look at this, semicolon, comma after, and of course, the following sentence is connected. This one is connected to the previous one. And the message flows. I like it. These reasons seem to be convincing to accept that parents are certainly, are certainly responsible to teach social skills and behaviors to their uh, children. Very good. Uh, this is a concluding sentence. Um, it's fine, it's optional. You don't have to write a concluding sentence for your paragraph. This was a relatively large paragraph, but again, at IELTS, it's not really necessary uh, to write a concluding sentence for every paragraph. Moving on. Some other people think that the buck lies with schools. Man, this is beautiful. The buck lies or the buck stops with schools to educate children in a way that they become useful members of society. Mm. Now, we're talking about the school part the, or the people who believe this is the school's uh, responsibility to actually teach our children how to uh, understand the acceptable behavior in society. They may assert that teachers have been trained to teach children and so they are well informed about pupils. Okay, okay, uh huh. Good, good choice of word. Spirit, pupils' spiritual and psychological needs, which makes uh, for spiritual and psychological needs, which make them. Or if you want to refer to the whole thing, you need a comma here before which which makes them, in that case, but I need a comma, able to teach kids, I, I mean, the, the young, the, the, the very young, 
uh, more effectively than parents who may be igno ignorant of their children's true needs. That's a fair point. Like these guys are well educated, well informed, and they went to school for that, to university for it. Okay, their next rational could. Uh, I think the writer wanted to say rationale with an E here. Rationale means reason. Rational means logical. And they are two different words. You see how different they are. If you add one E or remove one E, this is, uh, this is a mistake. It doesn't affect my understanding. I understood. There is there is no other variation. I'm not confused. It's uh, and we 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 don't have uh, an adjective before a verb. That's that's weird. I admire the attempt, but this is a mistake, and it's uh, it's not a very good mistake. Mistake. It's it it is an error. I mean, through and through. Could be the fact that as many parents are workers with hectic work schedule, they probably do not... Hectic work schedules, uh, maybe. Well, why don't we pluralize it? Or with a hectic work schedule. They probably do not have enough time to devote to their children. Devote? Mm, good word. And this makes school's responsibility more essential. I like that. So, in conclusion, personally, I believe that if schools are and parents do not work together constructively, it would be difficult, if not impossible. I like this. I like that. I like these moves. You see these grammar moves? And the punctuation is spot on. If not impossible, for children to develop sociable personalities that their main concerns our society. I see. That's a good point. In other words, uh huh. So I have another sentence for my conclusion. Parents and schools must be in close touch. I, I, I don't need this comma. And follow the same educational methods and approaches. I don't need this comma either. So follow the same educational materials and approaches. That, that, that's it. You don't need a comma, you have only two items. To educate children uh, on how to be influential members of society. Uh, this is a very good conclusion, two, two sentences. There is no need to say anything extra because the, the, the writer's opinion is a combination of two camps. And I like this, uh, this uh, the follow-up sentence in the end, that uh, this, uh, to, to say why it is important, how influ influential it can be, and if we fail to do so, uh, there might be some consequences. I like that. All related to the topic, and at the same time, it's a very healthy conclusion. Oh, 336 words. Let's look at the band descriptors. Okay, lovely, lovely. Uh, task response, fully addressed all parts, all elements are fully developed position, the writer's position is there very, very well, with relevant and extended and supported ideas. It's not nine, well, uh, because we, could use one or two examples uh, for each uh, items. Uh, we, we basically talked about the facts. We described it, but we never uh, had the chance to delve in, go deep and say, for example, a teacher at school uh, has a job to do that and they, they know about psychology, they know about this, for example, if a child fails to do his or her homework, the teacher can, uh, knows how to react, while a parent might get angry um, and, you know, uh, do something that is 
that is that might affect uh, the child's uh, memory or psyche or like the child's behavior or might abuse god forbid uh, abuse the child so uh, i mean we didn't have that kind of kind of deep analysis that's it that's the only concern i have here for coherence and cohesion everything was presented logically it wasn't sequential we didn't have all the we didn't have a list of the elements uh, for um, for the school and for the parents uh, but the uh, i mean everything was logical like first we talked about the parents uh, opinion the, the opinion that uh, supports parents role and then the second one that supports schools role uh, the that is basically fine and uh, paragraphing was very good the transition between sentences excellent uh, lexical resource was the area that i yeah had the most uh, difficulties with this uh, there are some errors the, the vocabulary errors were more than a couple or more than a few, um, you know, you could you could basically go ahead, go back and see instances where I pointed at the errors uh, here and there. And as for uh, grammatical range and accuracy errors, apart from two commas, I didn't pick any any major errors. Basically, the whole thing was quite clear. Uh, it, there were instances that the grammar could be more natural. But, uh, well, that requires uh, a higher level and uh, a higher command over grammar. And the range was basically around these, uh, I mean, one or two uh, grammatical structures. Uh, the, the range was sufficient, was varied, but wasn't wide. For wide, you need to have at least maybe two, see at least two other advanced grammatical structures to see to fully understand that, yeah, the range is there. But this is not bad, really. All in all, I really like this uh, example, or, the, or this sample, not example. I really like this sample. I hope you enjoyed as well. This is a very good representative of a writer who has an incredible command over the, his or her current knowledge of English. Until next time, take care.